Hi everybody, I'm Kimberly Turner from cookingwithkimberly.com and today I'm going to show you a scrumptious recipe, a beautiful entree for Napa Jack's seafood etouffee. Now if you've never had etouffee, it is a fantastic dish from down south, in particular Louisiana. Now I used to go to school and university in Louisiana and I really miss the food terribly. So we're celebrating Mardi Gras this year and we're making a fantastic seafood etouffee. I'm using shrimp, nice big shrimp, some mussels and some clams. It's going to be really, really fantastic. This is kind of my take on it. And now I'm up in Canada and I can't seem to get crawfish and that's what's typically used for an etouffee, crawfish or shrimp. So I'm kind of jazzing it up a little bit. Also, not everybody enjoys onion and garlic in my house. I know it's crazy, right? But we're not going to use so much onion and garlic today and I'm actually going to add a little bit of carrot to my Trinity mixture, uh, kind of a Trinity Mirepoix mixture. So there's going to be um, peppers and celery and carrots and some lovely other vegetables and it's all mixed into this stewy type environment. Then you put the seafood in at the end and you serve it on rice. So this is going to be fantastic. Now I'm going to start this off by making a roux. So behind me I have a large um, pot, you can use a Dutch oven, uh, and I'm going to use six tablespoons of butter to start. A roux is a combination between a flour and an oil, so you could use olive oil, you could use whatever. And actually I'm going to add just a splash of olive oil to raise the smoking point of my butter. Now, I'm not um, going to take this roux to a dark, dark chocolate color as I would with a gumbo. Today, it's just gonna get to a peanut butter color. This is gonna take about 10 minutes-ish over medium heat. So I have six tablespoons of butter and I have a half a cup of flour. So what's a roux for? A roux actually thickens your dish at the end. So instead of it just being a liquidy, soupy mixture, it's gonna be nice and thick, fabulous. Also, a roux imparts a lot of flavor as well. So a roux is a really integral part of Cajun and Creole cooking. Um, it, it does a beautiful job at making it a beautiful color, a nice flavor, and it thickens up whatever they're making. So melt this butter down and really combine the flour and the butter together. You don't want any chunks. And you want it to try, kind of cook out that flour flavor, get to a peanut butter color, and uh, it's going to be all as well. So make sure you keep moving it. Don't leave it. You have to babysit a root. In the meantime, I'm going to get my vegetables ready. So I have three stalks of celery and I'm going to just um, finely, finely slice that. I don't want it to be a dice, but um, I do want them to be, you know, bite-sized pieces, comfortable on a spoon or a fork. Their typical seasoning for things is called the Trinity, and it's equal parts onion, celery, and bell pepper. Now, I'm going to be using sort of that. I'm using celery, and then I'm using a pepper. I'm using a little hot pepper and a tiny bit of carrot. I'm also using one tiny cipollini onion, and I'm going to finally, finally mince that up. You're looking for about two cups of celery. And make sure you're still stirring your roux. So I'm going to get a bell pepper. I'm using a green one today, but you can use any one you want. Traditionally, it's a green one. I just want similar size. So I'm going to cut them lengthwise and then just cut them into a nice little dice. Now the French's counterpart to the Trinity uh, seasoning is the um, mirepoix, and that's celery, carrots, and onion. So the only thing that's different with this one is that it has the pepper. So I'm going to use roughly the same amount of pepper as I have celery. I'm just eyeballing that. It looks like it might be three quarters of a large pepper. So I'm using a cipollini onion today, just a tiny little thing, and they're a little bit milder than uh, large onions. So that's what I'm going to use, and that's what I have on hand. And this is an Ontario yellow cipollini onion. Make sure you check out my review on this. You're going to love these. I also They also have purple ones, or I guess you could call them red. So I'm just going to finely mince this up. And that's going to be my onion component. Now, if you really like onion and everyone's cool with that, make sure you use about two cups, even, even amounts, okay? About two cups of that. Um, if you want to use garlic, you could use two or three um, cloves of garlic. It's finely minced up as well, and you can get that prepared now, too. Now, I'm going to add the celery and the peppers to my roux in just a couple minutes. It's nearly at this uh, peanut butter color. I'm going to add the celery and the pepper and this little hot pepper, but I'm also going to add that carrot and the onion. But I'm going to do that later. I'm going to grate the carrots because I want them in really tiny little pieces. 
And carrot is kind of an intruder in this dish. It's kind of like my little addition to beef it up. And it's also gonna be a pretty color, but uh, it's gonna give some nice flavor as well. But when it's grated, it doesn't need that long to cook. So I'm gonna put that with the onions. So I'm gonna grate up maybe a half of the carrot. Now I'm going to use about a half of a, a long pepper. Now these are a little bit spicy. They're not super spicy, but I'm just gonna use half of one and I'm going to finely mince this as well. This is gonna go in with the onions and the carrot. If you like really spicy, you could add the whole thing. You could add a jalapeno, you could add whatever kind of nice hot pepper you like or you have on hand. So I have that pretty much like, almost minced, I would say. Okay. So let me show you my roux, it's ready to go, and it's a peanut butter color, so that's all you have to look for. You know the color of peanut butter. There you go. So, ready to go. On my stove top. And to that beautiful roux, I'm gonna add my celery and my peppers. If you're using onion, use it now. Now, my vegetables are gonna cook in this roux for roughly 10 minutes, so in about another five minutes, I'm gonna add these other veggies that I have prepared. So stir them around. Tenderize them up, get them all mixed in with that root. All right, so now I'm also gonna prepare some tomatoes. Now, if you have a can of tomatoes, use that. If not, I'm going to use maybe three or four tomatoes and I'm going to, you know, finely dice them and then I'm going to also include the liquid. So just take out that core and chop them. Okay, it's time for me to add my carrots, my little cipollini and the finely diced hot pepper. And I'm going to get some spices ready. I'm going to add a nice large bay leaf, a couple chili flakes, depending on how spicy you like your uh, meal. So I'm going to use this really delicious spice rub that I have from Napa Jacks. This is their chicken and fish rub. And this is what the um, container looks like. It comes like this. And make sure you check out my review on this. Lots of delicious things have come out of this little tin. So I'm going to actually Cajunize it a little bit, okay? This is kind of a Southwestern seasoning, but I'm just gonna give it a little bit of a Cajun kick. So probably for the whole meal, I'm going to use about two tablespoons of the rub. Now this rub can be found at Wine Country Kitchens online at winecountrykitchens.com. They have a whole line of these really tasty spice rubs. So helpful, so just already made for you, beautiful. So I'm gonna use a little bit of this uh, premium sweet smoked paprika to add a little more spice to it. Um, if you've never seen sweet um, smoked paprika before, you're missing out. It is really a delicious ingredient, I have to say. And I'm going to add about a quarter of a teaspoon of that. This one comes from La Chinata. You can check them out online at lashinata.com. I love them. All right, so they have premium varieties of all their flavors. They have sweet, bittersweet, and hot, and they also have the regular ones. But this is a special occasion. I'm gonna use the premium. I'm gonna add some freshly ground black pepper, a little bit of cayenne pepper, maybe an eighth of a teaspoon of this. I'm gonna add an eighth of a teaspoon of thyme, ground thyme, and about a quarter of a teaspoon of oregano. If you wanted to add onion powder or garlic powder, feel free to do so. So I'm just going to mix this all up, combine it evenly, these little spices, and that's what we're going to use to season. I'm going to add bits at a time. You don't want to over season, so I don't want to just add all of this. So uh, you're going to do taste tests and make sure that you're on point with what you're doing. But this is what it looks like now, and we're ready to go. So I'm going to add right now a nice uh, pinch of that. Mm, that smells heavenly. Ooh wee. Awesome. So now I'm gonna add my chopped tomatoes. There they are. In they go. We're gonna cook these for, I don't know, three, four minutes. So the tomatoes are really gonna work on the root. You're gonna see it's gonna start getting, you know, creamy-ish. Oh, this is gonna be so good. I'm so excited. So I have one quart of stock. Now you could use some kind of seafood stock. You could use shrimp or lobster. You could use a chicken broth if you want to. You could use water if you wanted to. You could use beer. Uh, today I have a combination of chicken stock and some um, stock that we used to cook some sausages. So it's a nice smoky flavor from the sausages and some chicken stock to make up the rest, okay? So in that goes, I'm actually gonna whisk this in. 
because you don't want lumps, okay? That roux does a nice job of thickening. You don't want to ruin everything now. So one quart is roughly four cups. Now I'm gonna bring this mixture up to a boil and then I'm gonna turn it down to a simmer. And we're gonna let that go for about 45 minutes. It's gonna reduce in volume, it's going to thicken up and it's going to really awaken all of those beautiful flavors together. They're gonna to mingle and marry and have a great time. So in the meantime, I'm going to scrub my mussels and my clams and get my shrimp prepared and uh, so you'll see me then. Oh, make sure you make some rice as well on the side because you're going to serve that on top of rice. Can't wait to eat this. I'm so excited. All right, it's crunch time. We just enjoyed our beautiful appetizer. We had a blueberry mango and spinach salad with a Cajun, Cajun mango vinaigrette and prosciutto wrapped Cajun scallops. You have to check out all three of those recipes. They were phenomenal. So we're ready to go. The etouffee has been simmering for a good hour, okay? It's a nice thick sauce at this point. In goes my seafood. Now I've rinsed, scrubbed and rinsed uh, and de-bearded my mussels. I have a pound of them. I have a pound of little neck clams. They've been scrubbed as well. And I have probably two dozen large shrimp, okay? And in go my shells. Now any shells that you see that are broken or are open when they're raw, chunk them. Okay, if you just tap these muscles and they don't close themselves, that means they might be dead. So just chunk them. And any shells that don't actually open in your in your sauce after a couple minutes of cooking, they shouldn't be eaten either, okay? Because there might be something wrong with them, you just don't know. So in goes my seafood. This won't take but maybe five minutes for these guys to open up and cook clams, the mussels. I'm going to wait a couple minutes for my shrimp before I throw them in. Stir that all through. You want that all in there. They're going to give their cure into this etouffee sauce as well. You're going to be able to use the shells to, you know, eat, this, eat more sauce. And I'm just going to put the lid on, okay? Five minutes-ish. Check them. All right. These guys are only a couple minutes from being done. So in go my shrimp. Stir everything through. Okay, so I have some fresh parsley, mi finely minced, and I have a large bowl. I'm gonna serve it family style tonight. Um, I also have some rice already made, so that's gonna go in the bottom of my bowl, and then everything's gonna get scooped on top, and it's going to be belligerent. We'll see you in a minute. This is done, and it looks so beautiful. Look at this. Oh, a whole pot of steamy seafood etouffee deliciousness. All right, so, and I'm just going to spoon this over top of my rice. And you're gonna see what a glorious dinner. What a wonderful Mardi Gras surprise. So just get all that seafood on top and lots of that nice sauce you'll be able to get to. Look at that, Mom. Oh, gorgeous. Could it be any prettier? No, nope. it couldn't be more appetizing. It's almost, it looks like a paella coming to the table, doesn't it? Well, yes. So etouffee, it doesn't usually have all these um, shellfish, but, but. This is our style of etouffee. Hey, you gotta use what you have available, what you have access to. And what you think is going to taste delicious. Yeah, it's good for you. Oh my goodness. Look at those beautiful plants. So, oh. make sure you get some of this gorgeous sauce all on it. It's going to soak into that rice, as well as um, you're going to want to use those shells to scoop it up. So, I'm going to actually put some more in each bowl as we go so that you can have more. I don't want to completely make the uh, rice waterlogged, sauce logged. There you go. Couldn't be any prettier, except with some fresh parsley. I'll keep this nice and warm because we're gonna want more of that. And I'm going to sprinkle the top with just a little bit more of that seasoning. Ugh. Oh. And voila, there you go. Seafood etouffee. So let's serve this up. All right, we're ready to eat. 
You ready? Yes. So if you want to serve some um, hot sauce with this, feel, feel free to do that. Well, you need a clam. It's a clam bait. Look at this. This is mom's bowl. Ooh wee. So here's for mom. That's good. Yeah, you like that? That is fantastic. Good. For sure. Mm. Out of this world. Really? Mm. Mm -hmm. That's that Napa Jacks for you. Well, we made quick work of that big bowl. <laughs> Let's see how it is. Mom says it's delicious. It's awesome. Yeah. Oh my goodness. And it's not like a gumbo. It's more like um, like a Cajun kind of gravy, wouldn't you say, Mom? Yeah. It's like a thick sauce that's the consistency of a gravy. Mmm. Yeah. Mmm. A sauce with the rice. That's outrageous. Oh my goodness. Now add seafood to it. Mm. And all that, mmm, mmm, all the beautiful liqueur that was inside the uh, shells, that brine from the sea, mixed with the HFA sauce. It's fantastic. Mmm. The clams are perfect. Mmm. Yeah. Mmm. Mmm. -hmm. The mussels are so beautiful. Mm. What a delicious meal. Mmm. Those shrimp. Nice big shrimp. Mmm. These are really nice shrimp. You peeled those yourself? I did. Ah. I did. They're huge. They're mm. lovely. So I used a pound of mussels, a pound of uh, clams, and uh, um, maybe two dozen shrimp. Nice big ones. Mmm. Mm. It's an impressive meal to bring to the table, first of all. Mm -hmm. Especially family style with all these beautiful open shells like fans. This would be fabulous for Valentine's Day, for Mardi Gras, for tailgating, for, man, any midnight, any uh, midweek dinner. Mmm. -hmm. Mm. Or Friday night supper when you want to have fish or mm -hmm. seafood. Perfect for Lent, right? For Fridays? Oh, this is absolutely stellar. Mmm. Mmm. I really like my HFA with crawfish, but this, this is something else. So I hope that you try this recipe. You're gonna love it. This spice rub gave us so much flavor today. It seasoned the whole sauce. And that's the main point of an HFA, is this nice, thick, creamy sauce that just flavors everything. It's belligerent. It really is. Like, you could just eat it by the by the spoonful, hey mom? That's good. So make sure you check them out online, winecountrykitchens.com for this spice rub and their whole line of delicious spice rubs. These are fantastic. Today I used the chicken and fish one, but man, they're all delicious. Boy, you're gonna have a great Mardi Gras. You're gonna surprise everybody with this really, really awesome dish. Bringing that to the table for guests was an impressive presentation. I agree. Mmm. Mm -hmm. Then you can go ahead and make up some Napa Jacks Cajun Caesars. Those were fantastic. Another recipe we did today and some coconut Hascap Hurricanes. Wow. Really, really great. It's a real celebration. Here. Sure is. Hmm. Anyhow, I really hope that you make this because you're really going to love it. You're going to impress everyone. Everyone's going to think you're you're from down in Louisiana, down south, all right? Follow me on Twitter at Cooking with Kim E with a capital E. Like the fan page at Facebook.com slash Cooking with Kimberly. My shows are on iFood.tv slash Cooking with Kimberly, YouTube.com slash Cooking with Kimberly, and you can find me syndicated on Roku. Come to my website at CookingWithKimberly.com and subscribe. Interact with us and let us know what's going down in your culinary world, all right? Be a champion in your kitchen and eat deliciously. Bye.